The NFL Combine has been both criticized and positively expressed for its importance when scouting NFL prospects. The most common theme of criticism is that the measurables don't correlate to in-game success. Most people feel the film is all you need. Just an example, John Ross ran the fastest 40-yard dash in NFL Combine history, but his production on the field since entered the league isn't even top 20. There are just some things you can't measure to determine how good of a player will be in the NFL. A lot of elite players are drafted in the later rounds, uh, insert Tom Brady here. But the NFL Combine does have its importance for coaches and GMs, so we're going to discuss what a coach is looking for at the Combine and then break down some tape of this year's Combine. So first is the things that we do not get to see as fans. It's the interviews and the medical evaluations. So this is the most important for coaches because this is when you really get to uh, know a player. The Combine overall lasts about a week for a player. Coaches have a day, uh, have days to formally speak to prospects and informally during the week speak to them as well. So coaches are just gauging what their character is and does their personality fit their team. Specifically for product prospects with character issues, coaches and scouts will ask them the tough questions. Uh, your answers itself don't really matter too much as opposed to how you answer your re uh, how you answer and your reaction to the question. So one example is that Des Bryant was asked by Dolphins GM Jeff Ireland, is your mother a prostitute? Des said he was very mad about the question, but did not show it. He answered all the tough questions he was asked calmly. The Dolphins GM did later apologize to, to Des Bryant, but that was something in the news media that had to be, or didn't necessarily have to be addressed, but the fact that he was asked it um, and his reaction w was perfect. So along with getting to know the prospects, the medical is equally important as well. A person's medical history can determine if a team will take a chance on them or not. The best quarterback in this draft is Tua Tagovailoa. He seems to have cleared all the medical evaluations, but the medical is why he probably won't be the first QB taken off the board. Most teams that need a quarterback need them to be ready to play day one. Two may be able to play this upcoming NFL season, but if I was a GM, I would let him recover for a year and learn as a backup. The medical evaluations is also good for a player as well. So this year during an evaluation, LSU's tight end Thaddeus Moss found out he had a fractured foot that required surgery. Now some will say it is better to find out after signing your first contract but the longer you wait on an injury, the worse it is getting. So long term, it's not just uh, it's just not the best uh, to wait on something like that. Even if you're a player who may not get drafted at all, no one has the mindset that they will only play the average career, which is about two and a half years. So many players believe um, that they will get a sad contract. So I would definitely take care of an injury now instead of later. So number two is the actual measurables. So the measurables are in fact your height, weight, hand size, and the field drills. Things like this matter to put into perspective. So if you have two players the same position, uh, same height, one is 50 pounds heavier, something like that, the difference in their 40 yard time, or if it's the same, can be impressive or may fit the team scheme better. For example, LSU's Isaiah Simmons is 6'3", 238. He ran a 4'3", unofficial 40. That is not normal. <laughs> so along with this tape, those measurables show how he can be utilized in the NFL. So um, in this year's combine, another linebacker, Auburn's Nick Coe, weighed in at 280 and ran a 4'8", unofficial 40. Now, that does make some sense for his weight, but also verifies, verifies the type of linebacker he can be. You know, an inside linebacker with some thump. He wouldn't really fit into like a 49er scheme. Their base defense is the wide nine, which requires fast linebackers to be able to cover those gaps. So the actual drills that pertain to the position are important as well. A coach is mostly looking for the mechanics and technique of how you are performing a drill. Obviously it shows how good your technique is, but also is an indicator of your work ethic. No one has the talent to just show up to the combine and perform well, let alone be a high level football player for years. The technique is developed through time by doing it right and consistently performing correctly. So even more specifically, the NFL Combine is a test, uh, but it has all the answers to it. Every player knows what drills are going to be ran and how. 
So even the newer drills that were introduced this year, if you look uncoordinated or you look lost in the drill or you may not have trained for the NFL standard and probably not paying attention while you're there, those things can make a bad impression and hurt your draft stock. Even if you look good on tape because your competition is more of an even playing field now for the NFL. All right, so we're going to start with the 40-yard dash. We'll look at a couple of different players. So first, uh, we're going to look at Henry Ruggs. He ran the fastest uh, time this combine. So the only thing that doesn't translate to actually playing football is the start, but we're going to talk about the start anyway. Like I said, these players have been uh, practicing or training for specific events at the combine, so they shouldn't look stupid ridiculously uh, during the start. So... He has like a pretty good angle, pretty good foot placement, everything that he's been taught leading up to here. He's actually went to Michael Johnson performance. If you guys don't know who Michael Johnson is, he uh, was a world record holder for the 400 and 200 meters, one of the best sprinters of all time. Uh, and I'll actually leave a link in the description of Henry Ruggs III and Jerry Judy training for the 40-yard dash. All right, so let me play it a little bit. Mm, so good start so the reason why this is important is just because they've been training for this for a long time so they want to actually see that they've been putting in the work that's really the only important thing for the start all right good angles good arm swings good drive phase everything was all good all right all right, so the next 40 yard dash we're gonna look at is the defensive line. Why this is important, because specifically for D linemen, we're looking mostly at their 10 yard split, because they are like literally on the line of scrimmage. So how fast can you get off the line and explode off the ball and get to the quarterback, right? So one, we're looking at the time. This time was really great. Then his overall time, he's fast. That means he can run down quarterbacks. As you can look at the simul cam right here, He's faster than Baker Mayfield and faster than Sam Darnold. And there are a lot of other quarterbacks that are slower than both of them. So <laughs> he can track down the quarterback. So the last 40 yard dash we're going to look at is Isaiah Simmons, linebacker from Clemson, but also plays safety, corner, nickel, and all that other stuff. So let me ride. This is important because he is a linebacker with that size and strength and his weight and he's running a 439 that's ridiculous um but that number tells us he can he in college he was playing like basically gave a wrong defense this number just solidifies it that yes he is going to be playing somewhere else on defense or playing all over on defense not just specifically somewhere else and then also his form is great he can run some people do look awkward. Uh, if you watch Nick Bosa's start of his first 40-yard dash last year's combine, he was off balance and it, it looked really bad. But he came back strong on the second one. Into the good stuff, that is the actual drills itself. The things that actually matter, you can see their technique in um, without pads and stuff and really see how they move. That's why the combine is important. So, one, this guy's a defensive back. So looking at his body posture for backpedaling great uh his first step back is with his back foot uh, obviously coaches teach it teach it differently for for different reasons but typically that's what it is you want your first step with that uh your power coming off that front foot and that step coming off of that back foot so it's little hip turns what we want to see is can he stay on the hash He's not rocking all the way over here or rocking all the way here. You want to get that nice tight foot movement. And it should be fluent. He shouldn't look stiff. Right now, he actually looks kind of stiff, honestly. That lean is a whole lot. Let's rewind it just a little bit. When he's going to catch the ball right here. Look at his arms and look how stiff his back is. His arms are really tight and he's not, if you just run naturally, that's not how you run. Your arms aren't just like super tight like that uh, in terms of your shoulder swing. You're pumping your arms a little harder than that. 
so he looks he looks like really stiff like that but he's still one of the best dbs that we have in this draft and his film does say it all and we look at this again he's staying nice and straight but he does look a little stiff and Deion sanders and jamal adams were both saying that as well so this is just another drill just looking at his ball skills if you look at this timed it very badly jumped too high wasn't very good so essentially with no pads on nothing but yourself it's just a regular drill this should be like really easy you shouldn't it shouldn't be hard to be able to track down a ball like that so we're just basically as a coach looking to see if you can do the fundamentals like that that's really all that is and then last drill for the dvs the w drill this one is a very good one as you can see this dude is very smooth with his movement Rewind it a little bit. And he doesn't, his feet keep moving on the brake. A lot of people, they do the little one, two step and they're uh, breaking with uh, their inside foot, but it's a little pause. Whereas he keeps his feet moving, one, two, three, and then bang, it's just a constant movement. That's what we really want to see. All right, so with these D linemen, for this particular drill, we're just looking at your footwork. The important thing for this drill is he's going to a quarterback. He throws it. Okay, now can you pursue to whoever has the ball and get, get to the ball? So next one, you're looking at strong hands. So this is what you want to see here. So that you're doing a rip move, but they want to see violent hands. Like they want to see that bag moving a lot more than that, honestly. And this particular one is can you have that balance to not fall a lot of times in a game a d lineman is rushing the quarterback or reading the lineman or something and they need to basically have good footwork to stay up and not go on the ground and pursue whoever has the ball so it's just a little drill to see that and then a nice little finish of how fast you can go all right, so next we're gonna look at the offensive lineman. This particular drill, oh man, I didn't play very well, huh? Let me go back. All right, so this particular drill, two linemen, one's a guard, one's a tackle. Uh, just basically running like a, a trap read, kind of. So one is gonna down block and then one's gonna pull. You're really just looking at, uh, or you can say, call it like a cross block, but it's really just looking at your footwork, your posture. Boom. Oh my goodness. If anyone in the comments like knows like a program I can use to like rewind film and all that good stuff, like better than what I'm doing with a mouse, let me know. But anyways, we're looking at their posture. So why is this not pausing? This guy, nice posture to the back. He's not too lean forward and he's not too upright as well. It's a good solid base. So when he did come in contact right here, uh, he'd be in, have a better better leverage to continue to block this guy if he was like in a, a worse posture. This guy. This is basically like a zone read. He's uh coming up a block and then going to the next level. So that's good. And then this one, I like this one. It's just a regular pass block. Again, we're looking at what in the world is going on here. Again, we're looking at posture. Posture. Good solid base. Not lean too far forward and not leaned too far back. And those hands, we could probably get those hands maybe a little tighter yeah a lot, a lot tighter because he, he is just a little punch but you don't want it to be his elbows were like flaring out a little bit too much one that's bad technique and like someone's gonna get off your block easy and then two if someone uh if you get a hold of somebody like that and your elbows aren't tight and then they get off of you 
uh, but you're still holding on to them, then that is when holding is called. So get those elbows nice and tight. So we call the fit. So next we're gonna watch a fade drill for the receivers. Um, this is a red zone fade, goal line fade, whatever you wanna call it. Just a fader out to the corner of the end zone. Quarterback throws it up high and it's basically a jump ball. I uh, don't really see teams running that a lot no more, but I guess just to see the techniques and principles of you catching a ball is, is which of what they want to see. So they want to see you make a good move off the line. They don't want to see you make a too quick of the move uh, because they they you're going to run out of time. Basically, it's a, it's a timing throw. And, I mean, this dude's in a shotgun. It's not even under center. But shotgun, he's probably taking one step, throwing it up. So you want to not go too fast to make your move, and then now you're going to lose space in the back of the end zone. Uh, that's one. And then two, after you make your move, you aren't going way too outside, giving uh, giving you no room to work while the ball is in the air. You want to just get outside of this dude and then adjust to the ball while it's in the air, not the other way around. So we'll look at Jerry Judy. I think he does a good one. I don't know what's happening with my video right now. What is this? Not bad. High points it. The ball could have been a little deeper, a little higher. But, I mean, he could have he could have timed it a little bit better as well. Catches it not at the highest point where his arm's not extended. But the, good, the most important part with this catch is when he catches it, you want to see him rip down towards the sideline so only he can grab it and the DB has no chance whatever to play the ball, play the hands, whatever technique that DB is going to use. And that is what you want to see for this drill. So for this drill, the receiver is basically going to run in a straight line. Quarterback is going to throw like a fade again to the outside and the receiver is going to have to catch it. He's going to have to adjust to the ball and to catch it over the shoulder. So if the ball is good, it should look like this play right here. When he gets to that cone is when he can turn uh, his head around. So the ball should be in the air before then. And that was, that was pretty good. Not, not a bad throw. Uh, one thing I will say, um, in the game, he would have run a route like this where he looks, he, I mean, he looks like he's jogging right now. He's kind of just chilling. It looks smooth. It looks fluid. But uh, he, he would run the route a little harder, I would say, in the game. It's kind of slow honestly here is a gauntlet this was a really good one the main purpose for the gauntlet is why you're running you want to stay on this line you want to be rocking back and forth for the catch basically if you're running like a dig route or something or any any kind of route that you're running inside outside where you, you have to stay on a line when that ball is coming if you are not attacking that ball and you're drifting away from it you're basically giving the whatever defensive player is on you the opportunity to make a ball, uh, make a play on the ball in yourself, and not giving yourself a better opportunity to catch the ball. So we'll look at CD Lamb. This is really good. Why is this? There you go. That last one he drifted just a little bit, but not too much. Not, nothing to give you concern. And we're going to go watch this fade one from C.D. Lamb. See, now that is a good one. You're going to see it in slow motion right here. He jumps up. He gets it on the high point. And look at him yank the ball down to the sideline so he can only get to it. And I like that he tucked the ball at the end. A lot of people, they catch it and don't tuck the ball for some reason. All right, last one for the receivers, a little hitch route. Boom, so why this is important, see him breaking down. Now, uh, hitching a dig a little, little bit different. For a dig, you want to run as hard as you can, and get that inside leg to dip first, um, and then, uh, I'm sorry, outside leg to dip first, and then hard chop with that inside leg, and then that third step, you're cutting in. For a hitch, it's more more choppy. Uh, in terms of your feet but the way you do that is you do get real low at the waist hips are nice and low and you do 
because I mean he's right here when you're running you're running a route you're still if you think of it as a sprint you're running a route 10 yards right here you're basically in your drive phase so you have a, a really hard forward lean you know you're not in your top speed so you're gonna have a real forward lean on this as well so this uh, we call it angle I guess you could say it how, how much of a four lean he has and with his drop hips it is a breaking mess it is a breaking me mechanism but that is what you want for a route you're trying to slow yourself down as fast as possible utilizing your feet and your lowered hips and that nice lean where your center of mass is basically behind you so you utilizing as a breaking mechanism, mechanism and then making your cut so this is really good and the most important part to like a hitch route curl whatever you want to call it is come on man is that you're coming back to the football that is the most important part of that route all right, so we're looking at the quarterbacks. We're going to start off with this three-step throw and a little slant or post, whatever you call it in your particular system. But if you look at Justin Herbert, he looks not fluid in this type of throw. Let's get there. Not this one. He looks fluid in this throw. But on these little short passes, not this one. It's a seven-step drop and a little throw. Nice. For this one, he looks very stiff and like he's aiming it. Three, that three-step drop was slow. He has to like kind of control it a little bit. And then this one is looks like he's aiming the pass instead of just you know throwing it. But the drop back doesn't look bad on those deeper drop back passes. And you look at the follow through, the angles, like every every quarterback really looks good here. And we're not honestly looking at accuracy, accuracy too much in terms of where the receiver is at because a lot of this a lot of this is timing. But we are looking at where the ball should be thrown at for this particular drill. Uh if the receiver can't make it there or the receiver is just that fast, like it, we're not worried about that at all. So next, we're going to look at Jalen Hurts. So Jalen Hurts, he looked way more fluent, and that is a really good ball. Just to the outside, and that was a good, good, good adjustment by the receiver as well. But if you look at just Jalen Hurts, his drop back looks good. His follow through is good. All that good stuff that you want to see. His mechanics are very sharp. Look at that. Ball's nice. The elbow's nice and tight. Ball's not super high and it's not real low. Is that a good spot to be able to not turn over the ball? And again, that follow through. And that was a beautifully thrown ball. So yeah, this is what coaches basically look for at the combine. It's still important because you can have a bunch of players on the fence like, man, who do I want to draft compared to this guy? And sometimes it, it goes down to what their numbers were at the combine to choose who you want. And also uh, not just the numbers at the combine, like the workouts itself, but the guys like personality when you're meeting them like I said that is the most important part of the combine this is like your formal chance to really meet these players most of these players are still in school and they graduate this spring so we really can't like mess with them like that until then